Hey and welcome back. Ah, this is a great story. It's a story how the United Kingdom, by making a tiny change to its gas supply, can remove the equivalent of the CO2 from 6.5 million cars. Hydrogen is clean. When hydrogen burns, it only creates water. This means it could offer a way to deliver low carbon energy. Hydrogen is adaptable. It can be used alongside other heating and transport options to reduce carbon emissions. Hydrogen could also be a practical option for customers, heating homes in the same way as natural gas does today. Research is underway to find out more about how hydrogen could bring low carbon energy for homes, industry and transport to help towards a cleaner, greener UK. The United Kingdom is doing quite well with renewable energy, mainly from wind farms, a lot of them offshore. The amazing statistic is that Scotland has enough wind to be self-sufficient, but it still needs, you know, traditional power stations for a base load. And in England, the amount of energy made by wind and some solar has outstripped the amount of electricity produced by burning fossil fuels. Congratulations. Obviously, wind power produces electricity 24 hours a day, and at night, less of it is being used but we don't really have many ways of storing it. I like pump water storage, but it's an issue. So this company based in my old university town of Sheffield, well done Sheffield, to come up with this completely brilliant plan. They say that if you could turn the electricity, the excess electricity produced at night when there's a low demand into hydrogen, by turning water into hydrogen and oxygen, it's an expensive process, but you've got this cheap electricity. You could use the hydrogen as part of our gas supply. Nothing would need changing. You can inject 20% of hydrogen into so-called natural gas or North Sea gas, hydrocarbon gas, no boilers or gas fires or cookers would need converting, but the calorific level would go up and there's zero carbon dioxide produced by burning hydrogen. It combines with oxygen and produces water vapor. Brilliant. So it's a win-win situation. Britain has the excess wind power we don't use it at night, let's turn it into hydrogen, let's put the hydrogen in our gas, let's produce more calories for the homeowner to burn in their boilers, and produce no carbon dioxide from the hydrogen content, the 20% hydrogen content, in the gas. A trial scheme has been run at Keele University that has a closed loop gas main and they can inject the 20% of hydrogen in their local gas network and they're doing a trial for a year to see how it works. I absolutely think it's brilliant. I hope it is rolled out nationwide in the United Kingdom. I hope other countries can adopt this as well. Countries with a large hydro production, say Norway, or other people with wind turbine production can turn it into hydrogen and just put it in the gas pipes. How brilliant and simple is that? And as you know, I always like to have a bit of a personal story in my film, so here's mine for today. It reminds me of my parents and their problem with gas. So in the small Scottish town that we lived in, it had the gas works that turned coal into coke and produced town gas and other chemicals. It fascinated me as a child. I was really into science. My dad would go there occasionally and buy stuff. And I, I remember visiting the stinky old sulfur gas works. Really cool place. And it produced all the gas for the town. And it worked great, although it was a bit dirty. 
But come the white heat of industry, which was the catchphrase of the Labour government in Britain in the 1960s, and we started getting hydrocarbon North Sea gas that was marketed to people as natural gas. And I remember the 500 weight gas board little van coming to our house and converting the boiler, my mum's cooker and the gas fire in the living room. Little, I, th I guess he put in little jets to change over to natural gas. My mum cooking our supper turned on her cooker, put a pan of water on it and said, ooh, this isn't as hot as the old gas. And she was correct. The old town gas was mainly hydrogen. 60% of town gas, coal gas, from the old coke plant, the town gas producing stinky place down the road, was actually the green gas hydrogen. And when we converted as a country to natural gas or North Sea gas, if you want to call it, we produce way more carbon dioxide and it wasn't as calorific and it wasn't as hot. I remember as a child thinking, oh, my mother's such an old fuddy-duddy. She liked the old stinky town gas and the new cutting edge space age natural gas has to be better. But no, she was correct. And now the scheme has started to put hydrogen mixed in with natural gas, North Sea gas, and to reduce our carbon dioxide output. So that's my story for today. And that's the kind of story I really like telling, something from a personal memory, some kind of family connection, and a bit of science that might be interesting to you. I think um, a lot of people assume that this channel, because of my catchphrase, the truth is out there, is a bit about UFOs and conspiracy theories. It's really not. The thing that I really enjoy doing for you is to bring you stories that you wouldn't see in normal media on TV. That's the idea of this channel. I'm not into conspiracies particularly. I like a good mystery, but I quite like debunking them. So stay tuned for interesting science, myth-busting ideas, and, by the way, welcome to the second decade of the 21st century. It feels like science fiction. The truth is out there. Elizabeth and Malcolm are playing on their front porch. Hello, who's this coming? That's right, here's the man come to read the gas meter. Where does gas come from? Well, gas is brought to your home through pipes from the local gas works. All the capital cities of Australia, as well as many other cities and country towns, have gas works where gas is made from black coal. The best quality gas coal comes from mines in New South Wales. After it has been dug from the mines, it's carried by trains and ships to gas works all over Australia. At this large gas works in the capital city, the wharf where the coal boats, called colliers, unload is just across the road. At this wharf there are two large travelling grabs, each one lifting nearly three tonnes of coal at a time. 
The coal is dropped onto a long, endless belt, and at the end, another belt carries the coal over the road and into the gas works, where it is stored in a large yard. Before coal can be used to make gas, it must be crushed into small pieces, each one no longer and larger than a matchbox. There's the matchbox. The lumpy coal, three tons at a time, is lifted by this grab and dropped into a large bin called a hopper. The coal falls down a chute into the crushes, which break the lumps into small pieces. This is a retort house, where the coal is turned into gas. An endless chain of buckets lifts the coal right to the top of the retort house, where it's stored in hoppers ready for use. The coal is fed from the hoppers and falls into the retorts, which are heated from the outside. As the coal is heated, coal gas is given off. This diagram shows how the retort works. The coal enters at the top and gives off the gas when it is heated. Those dots show how the gas escapes from the retort through pipes. What is left of the coal is called coke and is emptied from the bottom of the retort into steel trucks. This is the raw coal gas as it leaves the retort. Notice its dirty colour. Other sections of the gas works clean this gas by removing tar, ammonia and other impurities to make it fit for our use. It is first passed through these tubes called condensers where it is cooled and given its first cleaning. The gas is then bubbled through tanks of water in this washing plant and also this scrubbing plant to remove still more impurities. It then passes through sealed boxes containing iron oxide where the cleaning of the gas is completed. Before the gas can be stored in the gas holders, it must also be dried. This drying plant removes water from the gas. The coal gas is now ready for use. However, gas is also made in other ways, and these other gases can be added to the coal gas. The coke is heated red hot in a special chamber and then sprayed with water to make what is called water gas. At oil refineries, high quality gas is also produced as a byproduct. This refinery gas is piped to the gas works. In Victoria, as well as using coal gas, water gas and refinery gas, the industry has built a plant for making gas from brown coal near Morwell. At Morwell, 100 miles east of Melbourne, brown coal is scooped out of a big open cut mine, pressed into briquettes, conveyed to the gas plant and made into gas. It is then piped at high pressure to Melbourne and other points. Men in control rooms at the main gas works mix the coal gas, the water gas, the refinery gas and the brown coal gas to produce a gas of uniform high quality. And these are the instruments they use to control the mixing. The finished gas is piped to these large gas holders 
which are the feature of all gas works. Although more gas is used during the peak periods of breakfast and tea time than at any other time of the day, gas is made steadily all through the 24 hours. Both the holders at the works and others in the suburbs hold the gas which is not needed during the slack or off-peak periods of the day and night. This extra gas is then used to meet the big demand at the peak periods. That is why sometimes the holders are full and at other times nearly empty. Large gas pipes called gas mains take the gas to the suburban gas holders, whilst pipes under the roads bring the gas from the holders to your home. Each house that uses gas has a meter which tells the gas man how much gas has been used. But do remember, houses aren't the only places where gas is used. Gas is used to bake bread, pies, and biscuits. Infrared gas lamps quickly dry paint on machinery. These are parts for washing machines. Sealing television tubes with a gas flame is only one other of the thousand of uses which gas performs every day. Pupils in high schools and technical schools use gas burners during their science lessons. Doctors and research workers also use gas burners in their laboratories. What do you use gas for in your home? Cooking? Washing? Clothes drying? Refrigeration? Hot water? Heating? Yes, that's right, and there are many other uses also. Next time you turn on your gas tap, remember all the people who helped you to obtain this useful community servant.